Hi, I'm Ron Polk. This is my first look at the Festool HKC 55 EB. This is the saw that I got in mail call from Festool. I've not had the opportunity to use this on a project in my shop yet. Of course, I didn't want to wait until I had a project to figure out all the features. I wanted to be able to hit the ground running. So I took a little time to learn a little bit about the saw, and I'm going to share that with you guys right now. I learned a lot of this stuff from other YouTubers, and I'm really thankful for that. One in particular is David Stanton. He's a carpenter that has a great YouTube channel. He's a lot of fun to watch and he's down in Australia. Go to the home page on my YouTube channel and you'll see some featured YouTubers I have over on the right. Just go down, you'll see David's, click on it. You can go right over there and subscribe. You'll do yourself a favor. I already have a battery operated track saw from Festool. So why do I need another battery operated track saw from Festool? These are very different tools. Both of these ride on a track with slots on the bottom on the base. With any of the different lengths of tracks, you drop it on. This track is right on the line where you want it and you make your cut. It's exactly the same. It'll ride on any of the tracks. The difference is this also will work on another track, the FSK tracks, but this has an added T-track which rides in the T-track area on this saw. This saw does not have that, and so it cannot work on these FSK tracks. Now I wouldn't replace this saw with this one. This one is for my finished work. This one is designed for construction, framers and siders, rough carpentry. With the FSK track, once you put the saw on it, it locks on, and then it has a spring in it. So you can see you can come up to material just lay it on the material. It squares on your material perfectly with these guides on the bottom. You can also adjust it so that it will cut from 60 degrees, both right and left. Like all Festool products, it's really well designed and easy to work with. There's all these green knobs and levers and that's all for you to interact with the tool, just like on all of their other tools. This fast fix on the front is a compartment you pull down. It exposes an Allen wrench to remove the blade. It also locks the blade. You can use this wrench, take it off, swap your blade. When you're all done, just drop your tool back into its little compartment, close that, and that unlocks the blade so you're ready to cut. On the back of the saw, you just squeeze this lever and put the saw right to the exact depth you want. Now this saw is imperial, so this scale is imperial, which is the only Festool product I have, which is all the rest are metric. They just started doing this for those of us who are stuck in that old world and have to do the conversion. The, the gauge or the pointer on the scale has a step, so it's got an upper and a lower. The lower is labeled FS, which is the track, so it automatically offsets the depth difference between if you use the saw without the track, because you can use this as just a standard skill saw or with the track, so you don't have to do that conversion. The other saw does that as well. Now this saw is not a plunge saw. The other saws are, so you can see there's no blade guard. The blade is up in the housing, and when you push down, the blade drops out as well as the riving knife. On this one, it's a traditional saw where the blade is down, and so there is a blade guard. Well, sometimes the blade guard gets in your way, and on a standard gill saw, there's a little knob or lever, and you push on that and pull it back to get your start, which puts your finger close to the blade, and a lot of people I have seen will actually pin these up with a shim, which is a bad thing to do. What Festool has done is they've put a thumb lever right next to where you would hold the saw, so you just push down on that lever and begin the retraction of the guard. The guard also has built into it the riving knife right on the edge. When it goes through the cut, spring will drop it down onto the material and hold it there, and the riving knife will ride in the kerf behind the blade. This is not a plunge saw like this is, but you can plunge with this. There's another lever that you push on, it unlocks it, and the motor comes up and it's spring-loaded. And now the blade is above, ready for you to drop it in. So if you're starting a, a closed cut where you're in from the edge, there's a detent right on the back of the base plate and that lines up with the back of the blade and so you can just simply put it where you want it and then push down and when you as you cut through once you get to the bottom and you've dropped it in it's going to lock and now it won't come back up so again it's not a plunge saw like this one 
But when you get to the end of your cut, you can either let the blade come to a stop and pull it out or push that lever and have the motor come back up. On the back of the saw, there is a scale for doing your angled cut so you can move the base plate, and in this case, the base plate riding on top of the track to get your bevel cut. It's a single knob, a really nice pointer, and it'll go to 50 degrees. This saw has the same scale and pointer, but it's on the front of the saw, and you have to remember there's a knob on the back, so you need to unlock both of them. This saw, you only have to unlock the one on the back, and I'm pretty sure they did that because in construction, you're out in the field, cutting rafters, cutting hips and valleys, you're gonna wanna have that compound angle, and you're gonna wanna be able to get to it quickly, and I think having the double knob would interfere with production. It's cordless, so it's nice not to have a vacuum hose as well. Like on this saw, even though I have an electric one, I rarely use it anymore because I really like working with the battery saw and so I don't want to work with the vacuum system and I have the bag with this one to catch the sawdust. This one doesn't come with a bag but you can get it and the same bag will fit on this. Now with the elbow on it you can use any of the hoses that Festool has and a lot of other hoses other brands fit as well. You'll find a lot of the diameters are the same. But I can remove this elbow and then put this bag on and then rotate it so that it's at the right position for me to be able to get my arm in and make the cut. Again, be out, I could see myself out in the field or in the shop wanting to move quickly. Not having a hose is, is, is a big advantage. And it really works. You'll see when I make a cut that there won't be much sawdust. It, it goes into here. What's unique about the construction saw over the track saw is again that it's locked onto its track and so I can just come up to a piece of material, put the track right on it, and make a perfect 90 degree cut. The scale says zero, but if you're a carpenter, you already know that miter saws and these kind of saws, they say zero when they really mean 90. So if you're doing math, you have to add or subtract 90. But for most of us, we know zero will make that square cut. On the bottom of the track, there is a guide on one side and on the other. This one is fixed and you can see it has some angles on it so that as I rotate, move this one, it can rotate and stay on its material. It's a rounded edge, it fits up nice and tight. This one moves forward 60 degrees and backward 60 degrees. So I can cut 60 degrees, make a miter right or left or anywhere in between. And the stop on this, again, it has that green knob you interact with, you loosen that. And then there's a spring detent you pull out on it, and it will drop in at the standard cuts, 0, 15, 30, 45, and 60. And it'll drop, the pointer will drop right in, and then you can tighten it down. Now, you can certainly stop at any degree in between. It just doesn't have a detent, so you get to where you want and then really tighten that down good. When I go to a 45, it drops into the detent, and then I just tighten it up. And then the material will ride against these two stops to give me a perfect 45 degree cut. And I've checked it with a machinist square and I'm getting absolutely perfect cuts. For framing, of course, you've got to do comp a lot of compound cuts when you're cutting rafters and hips and valleys and those kind of things. And so I want to throw the saw over. So now I've got my bevel cut. And then with these stops here, I've got my miter cut. And so I could make repeated rafter cuts. If I want to make a 90 degree cut, I set my gauge to zero. The bottom of the material will butt right against these two stops. Set my depth. This material is three quarter. I'm riding on the FS, so I'll go to the FX index and set it right to three quarter. It'll lock right in. There's no knobs to turn. And then come right up to the edge of my material, place it up against there. And get a perfect 90 degree cut. With this saw, the edge protects the edge of the plywood in this case for tear out. It doesn't have the right side of the cut protection the way this saw does. 
So you can get a little more tear out on the fall off side. I have two different tracks. I see the 420 as being the one I would use the most. It would be the most handy and versatile, but I do have a longer track if I am cutting wider material. And these are rated by length, so that's a 420. This is a 670, but the 670 doesn't actually measure the length of the track. It's much longer than that. This one is 1,050. This 670 is telling me the length of the cut that I can make with the saw clipped into it. Well, that's my first look at the Festool HKC 55EB. I'll be using this saw in my shop, on my projects, and in finished carpentry. If you want to find out more about it, how others are using it, just search it on YouTube. There's a lot of guys that have had it a while, and they're already using it in their work. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.